Hello everyone, welcome to Guidancy Education Channel. We are continuing Class 12 Physics Chapter 2, Electrostatic Potential and Capacitance. And that we are today doing Van D. Graph Generator. Before we start the video, please watch the video completely so that you get all points cleared. And if you think the video is useful, do like the video, share the video with your friends and also leave your feedbacks as comments in the comment box below. If you have not yet subscribed my channel, do subscribe it now and support me. Press the bell button and all button for notification of more videos like this. Thank you very much. My name is Ananda Veli. Come, let us start the video. Hope you are already familiar with the term generator. What is a generator? Generators are appliances which give or supply power or electricity when there is disruption of current or electricity. They help to maintain the continuity of daily activities in our personal or business matters or affairs. You would definitely have seen generators operating in shops or business complexes, hospitals, flats, etc. Van de Graaff generator is a special type of generator. It is different from the ordinary generator. This Van de Graaff generator can generate very large potential difference of magnitude of several million volts. We will see the uses, the structure that is the making, the working and the principle of Van de Graaff generator one by one. This generator is named after the scientist who made it, that is Robert J. Van de Graaff. Let us see the uses. They are used in accelerating electrons, protons, etc. Neutrons being uncharged, they are neutral, they cannot be accelerated. Second one, to sterilize food and process materials. Third one, for producing energetic X-ray beams used in nuclear medicine. Fourth one, nuclear physics. Fifth one, entertainment. You would have watched certain videos wherein a person touches the surface of the globe of Van de Graaff and his hair stands up erect. Even considerably long hair can stand up like this. This entertains the viewers. The viewers do not know the principle behind it. The principle is that from this Van de Graaff globe which is charged and having high potential, some amount of energy is transferred to the person who touches this globular part and then this charge energizes the hair and makes it stand erect. That's really surprising and entertaining. Okay. I was only referring to an instance where this Van de Graaff is used for entertainment, but it is meant for other valuable purposes. Now let us see the structure of Van de Graaff. Parts of Van de Graaff generator and its working and principle. We will take up parts of Van de Graaff generator first. It consists of a metallic hollow sphere resting on a cylindrical column as stand and this is the base hollow metal sphere cylindrical column this portion that is the inside of the spherical portion is hollow there is nothing inside there then you have this metal pulley pulley one inside the spherical structure and another pulley pulley two at the base near the base over these two pulleys runs a dielectric, that is a non-conducting, an insulating belt. Insulating belt. There is a metallic brush near the lower pulley and one more near the upper pulley. The metallic brushes do not touch the belts. The brush near the first pulley is in contact with the outer metallic hollow sphere. The lower brush also does not touch the dielectric belt. It is connected to the external source of current that is a battery. This is for charging. There is a small gap between the brush 
and the belt wherein a thin layer of air is present. This is the metal brush 1 and metal brush 2. Pulley number 2 is connected to a, an external motor. By working this motor, this pulley can be rotated. When it is rotated, the belt that is the insulating belt moves freely over the pulley. When the metallic brush is connected to the external source of current, charges are pushed to the metallic bristles of the metallic brush. In order to make this point quite clear, I will enlarge this portion as a small diagram and then explain really what happens there and how the charge is transferred to the belt. This is the metallic brush. You can just notice that the tip of the bristles are really pointed. The area over there is very, very, very small, much reduced. By reducing the area, more charge can be accommodated there. That is, the charge density at these pointed portions will be much, much greater. That is, for those who did not understand, when this portion is connected to the external battery, charges start flowing into this brush and the charges get accumulated on the tips of these bristles where the area is much, much, much less because the charge density depends on area. Charge density sigma is equal to Q upon A. So, when A, the area is less then the charge density will be more so at the tip of these bristles the charge density is much greater when charge density increases at these tips of bristles the potential also will be very great when the potential increases what happens the air particles i have already said that between the Brazil and the belt, dielectric belt, there is a small gap and air particles fill that area. So, when the charge density increases and the potential increases, the air particles start getting ionized. What is the meaning of ionization? That is, this high potential pushes the electrons from inside the atom of the air particles and the air particle or the atom or the molecule, whatever it is, it becomes positively charged. The first layer of atoms in the air gets positively charged. Then the next layer gets positively charged. The subsequent layers also get positively charged. And finally, this potential pushes away electrons from the dielectric belt and particles of the dielectric also lose electrons because of this high potential and they get positively charged and this positive charge moves upward as the belt is rolling up. I will repeat, due to high potential, electrons from the material of the belt get ejected and positive charge is developed there. Now, let us incorporate what we have seen here into this original diagram. The charge that is developed moves up along the belt. When the appliance is continuously charged, these positive charges move on to the belt and as the belt rolls up, the charges also move upward and reach the metal brush 1. There also ionization of the air particles take place and the charges are transferred to the bristles tip and from there it moves on to the surface of the metallic sphere. On the brush, the surface charge density is not uniform because the tip of the bristles is pointed. Other parts are broader. But on the surface of this metallic sphere, it is uniformly distributed. You have already learned that the potential on the surface will be the potential on the inside of this hollow sphere. Inside the sphere, there is no charge, but it has potential. We have already learned this. The direction of motion of the charges, that is the belt, 
bearing the positive charge is upward on the left hand side the positive charges are then transferred to the metallic sphere and as the belt moves downward that is on the right hand side excuse me i will note the direction of motion of the belt on the left hand side it is upward now it is more clear the direction of the movement of the belt on the right hand side is downward okay and as it moves downward the charge it develops is negative all the positive charges have been transferred to the sphere so the belt comes down with a negative charge now as the pulley is rotating the belt further loses electrons and then becomes positive so this goes on till a large number of charges is transferred to the surface of the sphere as the charges increase on the surface the potential also increases the potential is raised up to several million volts such high voltage is required if the van de graaff generator is to perform the functions for which it is meant you might wonder why it is charged in this fashion that is when belt is first charged then charge from the belt is transferred to the sphere what is the need for this in order to understand that we need one more diagram i will just clarify the principle of its working consider a charged metallic sphere of radius r let the total charge on the sphere be equal to capital q because of the charge residing on the surface a potential is generated on the sphere potential on a charged conductor v is equal to k q upon r so in this case it is k capital q upon capital r each material with which this conducting sphere is made will have a certain limit up to which only it can be charged and its potential will depend upon that say for example this conducting sphere has a capacity to develop a potential equal to 10 volts then it can be charged only up to that level but we want to store more energy we want to increase its potential to several millions then what is the method another metallic sphere of radius small r is introduced somehow into this first sphere this smaller sphere is somehow connected to an external source of current and it is charged the connecting wire is insulated so that it does not touch the external bigger sphere when this small sphere is charged it takes up a charge and let it be equal to q small q now this small sphere also develops a potential let this potential be equal to v dash equal to k small q upon small r now there are two charged objects one inside the other one is a larger sphere the other is a smaller sphere so the total potential on the outer sphere will be equal to the total of the potential due to charge capital q and charge small q similarly the total potential on the surface of the inner sphere will be equal to the sum of the potential due to small q plus potential due to capital q the potential on the larger sphere v is equal to k capital q upon capital r potential on the small sphere v dash is equal to k small q upon small r these are the potentials due to the charged small sphere and big sphere separately and the total potential on the bigger sphere due to the charge capital q and small q represented as v capital r will be equal to k capital q upon capital r plus k small q upon capital r why capital r in the denominator because the distance of the surface of the bigger sphere 
from the center of the small sphere is capital R. Okay, what is the total charge on the surface of the smaller sphere? That will be B small r equal to K small q upon small r plus K capital Q upon capital R. If we deduct the magnitude of V capital R from V small r, we will get the magnitude of the net charge on the smaller inner sphere. So, V small r minus V capital R will be equal to substitute their corresponding values K small q upon small r plus K capital Q upon capital R minus K capital Q by capital R plus K small q upon capital R. K capital Q upon capital R and K capital Q upon capital R. These two quantities in V capital R and V small r get cancelled. So, what remains is only K small q upon small r minus K small q upon capital R. These two quantities alone need be represented. K small q is common. So, it can be taken out. So, it can be written as K small q into 1 upon small r minus 1 upon capital R. 1 upon R will be a bigger value and 1 upon capital R will be a smaller value. So, 1 upon small R minus 1 upon capital R will be a positive value. So, K small Q into 1 upon small R minus 1 upon capital R will be a positive value. That means the potential on the smaller sphere will be always larger than the potential on the bigger sphere. So, if we connect the smaller inner sphere to the outer larger sphere, charges will automatically flow from the inner sphere to the surface of the outer sphere. So, by adopting to this method, the outer sphere can be charged beyond its capacity to be charged and its potential can be raised to several times greater than its original capacity. From the equation, you can understand this potential of the inner sphere is irrespective of the charge Q. It really depends upon the radius of the sphere. This is the principle of Van de Graaff generator. You have the outer sphere and a small inner sphere where the belt runs. Okay. Hope this video helped you to understand everything regarding the Van de Graaff generator. If you think the video was useful, do like the video, share the video with your friends and also leave your feedbacks as comments in the comment box below. If you have not yet subscribed my channel, do support me by subscribing. Then press the bell button and all button for notification of more videos like this. Thank you very much. We will meet in the next video with another important topic like this. Till then, bye. Take care.